And then let's, uh, um, let me go down here to the other end of the table real quickly uh, speaking, and I'm going to have to agree that once something is enacted in, in a law, the public ought to have a right to uh, get to it free. Don't the standard setting uh, organizations, Ms. Green, collect membership dues and, and generate revenue from the members who uh, participate? I mean, I understand in the old days it cost money to print up the books and distribute them, but now the marginal cost of making this information available uh, over the Internet I is basically none, and there's zero value to some of these, to a light bulb that doesn't fit the light bulb standard, to uh, use your uh, analogy. Shouldn't the private sector that benefits from these uh, the uh, pay for them and the public should have them free. Why shouldn't I be able to print out a copy of the electric code to make sure the electrician hooked the green wire up to ground in my house? Well, a couple of things. Thank you for the question. Uh, first, the, the SDOs have different business models. Uh, many do base their, their revenues on membership fees, but many don't. And those that don't are largely not-for-profit, mission-generated organizations. Um, that keep their barriers to entry low. That is, they have low uh, entry fees, they have low membership fees, fees for the very reason uh, that they can uh, use the sales derived from, the use the revenues derived from the sales uh, of, of... I sales. see my time has expired. I would love to sit down with you, and we could probably debate this uh, for, for an hour, and it's actually something I, I, I would like to do, because I do think it's important that, you know, I think you may waive your uh, right to that once you fight to get it enacted into law or it gets enacted into law. It's something we can talk about when we have more time. So, Mr. Chairman, I'll yield back.